Hold oh, the phone. Okay. Hold the phone. Look at me. Daddy? <laughs> yes, daddy. You're the daddy? Yes. Sex I was... talk with my mom and daddy. <laughs> oh, what the hell? Welcome to Sex Talk with my mom. I'm Cam Poder. And I'm Karen Lee Poder. That's my mother. And that's my son. We chat about sex on a weekly basis and all the things you typically don't talk about with a parent. We like to make the most uncomfortable conversations comfortable. So strap in. Strap on. And enjoy the ride. Welcome to Sex Talk with my mom. I'm Cam Poder. And I'm Karen Lee Poder. And we have a special guest here today for our, our Sex Talk of the Week. We have a s little sneaky freak. His he, name is Frank Smith. Frank Smith. Welcome. A, a brilliant writer, actor, and soon to be what, what, uh, like a, a gay icon. Um, the gay icon, certainly. A few <laughs> edits there. I am a big sneaky freak, not a little sneaky freak. Um, we have quoted you on the show before. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I, you know, you may have seen me on the sneaky freak parties as Richard Mystery, but today I am lifting the veil and announcing myself as, well, my new artist name is now, I have my middle name, so Frank Arthur Smith. Oh! Rebranding. Oh, Rebranding. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've, I've done that a few times. <laughs> gay, Karen, gay icons Karen in three Lee, names. Karen Lee Potter, yep. Karen Potter. Yeah. Now that Karen is such a lovely name to, to be. I've changed it to, to Karen Lee Official. We yeah. we are so delighted to have you here. Me uh, too. Speak for yourself. Me too. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I am. No, you've been one of the biggest supporters of our show yeah. from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And it you have evolved a lot since we first met honestly even so much in the past few months like it's, it's been, amazing and because of you truthfully like i it's so we'll get into it i'm sure but like i was yeah lots of good changes in my comfort about what i talk about what i do on camera so um oh, i owe it to cam we'll and cam to that. Oh, <laughs> thank you we are and and you also did just debut an incredible new web series called I, open to it Yes, I did. Yeah. So the first episode is about to be um, online for all of April for the first film festival we got into Wicked Queer, Boston's LGBTQ plus film festival. And then episodes two and three will be out after that sometime. Very and excited for you. We're going to talk Incredible. about that. We're going to talk about that a little later. I was privy to see the whole thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I did a special preview for sneaky freaks like Karen Lee, and she got to check it out. And Cam, uh, you watched the whole thing too, right? Of course I watched the whole thing. No, I, I was traveling. I was not able to watch it, unfortunately. However, I was getting a play-by-play -play from my mother. <laughs> Mom, do you want to read some of the texts that you were sending me well, while you watching this? Yeah, I mean, I started watching with Dee's, and Dee's got a little squeamish. And so. For our sneaky freaks, uh, Dee's is my mother's boyfriend yeah and it is very candid about um very frank you might say about <laughs> uh gay men and their sex lives uh so you i know, did read the heterosexuals script. beware <laughs> i did read the script we talked about the script on the show because it did feel very erotic to be reading a yeah. script it, a, that i knew my mother was also reading mm -hmm. um okay here's what you wrote mom <laughs> i got a text what were the live tweets yeah the, i got These a text, text were like spur, like every 10 minutes 10 54 p.m <laughs> Frank's movie is a porno. <laughs> <laughs> Frank is being a top. True. Frank is fisting. <laughs> I think I summarized it very succinctly. Do you think that she nailed it or what, Frank? You know, yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, <laughs> what would the episode three commentary have been? How would you wrap this all up? <laughs> Uh, I think those were very succinct, and I think get to, uh, they got to the point. <laughs> I would have liked if I had gotten some feedback from Cam, but I got nothing. Yeah. I, w I was at a wedding. <laughs> so yeah, I'm getting these texts. You had important texts to answer. Yeah. But anyway, it was really, really good. I enjoyed it, and um, I think it was bold, courageous, and I think it's like the gay Fifty Shades of... Uh, of gay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so it came about because, like, I, as a gay man, watch a number of gay web series, and there are so many that, like, I don't know, they just kind of have this trend of, like, the leads being self-sabotaging and the tone being, like, kind of downtrodden, and I was just noticing also that, like, I don't know, polyamory and non-monogamy were portrayed in a very, like, just apocalyptic way like it's like oh they're hooking up with someone else their relationship's over and i was like can we, <laughs> can we have another perspective on this that's like it's I fun and I silly think, and I sexy i think you got it i, th I yeah. do i think that's what you're gonna find when you watch a series don't give too much away already no no of course not just uh but the things to know are like yeah it's very uh sex positive much like this show and just like our whole thing is like open can mean different things to a lot of people, whether it's like that you're trying polyamory and, you know, threesomes or that you're just like having a 50 shades of gray tie up night. As long as you have two 
or more partners who are consenting and communicative, like anything goes. I love you tackle when I was reading the scripts, you were tackling a lot of different things. It wasn't just, oh, this is a gay web series. No, 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 yeah. no, no. You know, this is a development of this person's yeah, life. Yeah. I loved it. No, thank you for, yeah, th I appreciate that you see that because I think it's very easy to see like queer protagonists and be like, oh, it's a queer show. And I'm like, this is a show about queer people for everybody. Yeah. 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 Well, that leads us into our Beducate Yourself mm, segment. Excellent. Presented by Beducated. It's like the Netflix of sex education. We'll talk <laughs> about it in a bit. But they're, they're uh, lubricating this conversation with mm. a sneaky free question of the week. And what, can I read it? Yes, mother. What's the most intimate you've been with someone of the same sex? Now, you helped us. <laughs> uh, Frank, you Who's did help us come up with off? this question. It, and I just want to say, before we launch into our answers and our sneaky freak answers, uh, we recognize this is kind of a foolish question if we're talking to someone who is who is predominantly gay and, you know, obviously we would never ask a, a heterosexual person, how intimate have you been with mm. another person of the opposite sex? You might be surprised by my answers, though. They actually are only tangentially sex related. I just wanted to put a little disclaimer out there that I'm aware that our audience is, is oriented in all sorts of ways. Right. And mm -hmm. so we want to be inclusive here. But we're, we're sending these mess these texts, these uh, questions through text. We, can, we don't have like so many words that we could use. But <laughs> yeah. so sure. anyway. All right. What's the most intimate you've been with someone of the same sex? Let's answer as a little round table here mm -hmm. about that. Do not start with me. Okay, I, I'll start. I'll start. Um, so you might. <laughs> I think love that like, he's, he's diving in. <laughs> diving Usually in the guest right. goes last. I love that you're in. Let's no, go. I, well, I, how about this? Wait. I got two answers. So, no, I, I'll give both at once. I was gonna be like, come back to me. No, they, we're we're in it. So one is with my boyfriend, and one is not with my boyfriend. So um, we'll start with the not boyfriend one. This was before I was dating Matt, and I was single, and I was just not getting a lot of. Male attention, I'll say, um, in any way. And so when I first, like, I went to a friend's party one time and there was this guy who had a girlfriend and we started talking and we just deeply connected that. And I, like, talked about all sorts of things to the point where, like, his girlfriend kept being like, hey, do you need anything? Okay, I'll leave you two alone. Like, she was full on, like, seeing the magic oh, wow. happening and let it happen. And he even said at the end of the night, he was like, I... I feel bad that I don't live here. It was like, I feel like we really have something. And I was like, I know, but how special that we like got tonight. And I walked away from it like a little sad because like, obviously a, he had a girlfriend and be like, he didn't live there. But I was also like, that was special that I had this like Aww. very emotional connection at a time when I really needed it. Like I'd not felt that in a while. And that Aww. gave me a lot of hope for like dating and romance again. Oh, I did not expect that at all. And yeah. I, I had a similar yeah. experience that you did. Yeah. When I, I, I was turning 40, I had like sort of like, I think I was going through a little midlife crisis of, of sorts. And I was on a cruise ship with this very gay <laughs> cruise director and we became very close. But it was not a gay cruise. It was a regular <laughs> family cruise. And you were not gay cruising, just clarifying that. I was everyone. not gay cruising. <laughs> it was just, and it turned out that. And Tom Cruise we, was not the, oh, going to get sued for that. <laughs> there was no Tom Cruise involved. No. <laughs> But um, after the cruise, we kept in touch and, you know, it was all via, at that point, AOL chat or something like that because it was that long ago. But I have to say, we started talking very intimately and Cam's dad got very upset mm. because he was like... But this is not someone of the same sex. This is you being involved with the gay man. The same gender That's preference, exactly actually. What yeah. Okay, he, gay. All right, all right. So. That's what, the point is that it was a similar experience where... Even though it's the same, even though it's a gay person that you would think that there, would, there would nothing could come of it sexually, yeah. the intimacy is what I think upset Cam's dad. Yeah. The intimacy. But now in terms of what, if you wanted just a straight up answer to your question. <laughs> yeah, I want a straight up answer. With the same gay sex. I mean, I've had a triple kiss. Ooh. What is a triple kiss? That's when you're drunk and you start kissing women at the same time. I mean, I triple kissed and and then actually my boyfriend Deez was watching and he was getting into it. He's like, "Go for this. This is good. This is in the backyard." I mean, it was fun. It wasn't. I think it was more like for. It wasn't as sexy feeling as it was just mm. fun and doing something different and crazy. Yeah. But that that was my. 
big exciting story. You sneaky little I'm freak. Just such sneaky a freak. <laughs> <laughs> Attention. Was it, yes. <laughs> I, I don't even want to know this detail because you're my mother. But just for our listeners, is, was it like tongues hitting each other? What is yeah, it? Everyone think, mouth hitting yeah, each other? What's all going three on of here? Us were just tri- triple kissing and, and I mean, triple were, kissing. Hand, you're saying you're like that's a thing. That's not a thing. <laughs> I made it up. Okay. <laughs> I have a new term. It's called triple kissing. <laughs> Hand, <laughs> hands were where? <laughs> hands. I don't even know if hands were involved. It was Aww. just a triple kiss, and it was just kind of like I think it was just I kissed a girl, and I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, d- did anyone notice that was done to the tune of I saw the signs, I <laughs> kissed a girl, thank I you, opened up you. my lips and kissed a girl. That's one of my favorite games to play at home. Is like, what tune is Karen Lee oh, actually singing right now? Oh my god! Thank you very much. Right. <laughs> but you're right. I never can get that tune. How does that tune go? I oh, sorry, kissed, kissed a girl. Mm-hmm. And I That's liked right. it. That's yeah. Right. yeah. All right. Whatever. And Cam, you want to ch- j- just I have chime kissed right a man. In. You kissed a at, man. On like a weekly basis. At, but this, I mean, it was honestly, it was not so intimate. because it was grandfather? No. Because when he used to kiss, he'd slobber all over oh. you. <laughs> oh, that is he, true. He would grab the face and just start, sl- literally, like, it was like kissing a, a St. Was- Bernard. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was really intense. Yeah, his soul rest Very in heaven. Slobbery. Yes, that's uh-huh. right. <laughs> you, like, you don't know what, he's going in for that kiss. It's, it's a river. It's slobber. <laughs> it's saliva's all over the place. You don't know what's going to happen after it that. It is pretty amazing. How did so much saliva get on his... I don't uh, know. How did it... Yeah, how, did how was accumulate? he producing that? And when you get up there in years, you're known for drying out. But man, that mouth just kept going. <laughs> it's getting and wetter and wetter. <laughs> so it wasn't. It, all right, so you, I sorry to interrupt, but it wasn't your grandfather. No, I, I mean it's kind of lame. It was in. It was not sexual. It was on stage. It was like a speech and debate mm-hmm, thing. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and every week we'd perform a, a comedy routine, and it involved a kiss, a, a spin, and a kiss. So that spin I mean the bottle. No, he would spin me around like a mm. like I'm dancing, but I, honestly, I'm kind of lame in this department. That I haven't experimented. Lamest. What the I'd, fuck was that? Well, that's the you, most intimate I've been. But were you playing romantic characters, and did you like channel that intimate? No, moment? Frank. I wish no. I were. No, it oh, was. This is a bad answer. So you're, then. Gonna, <laughs> you're <mom's right>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's a bad answer. I, I honestly, I don't have any. I have never had a very. I mean, intimate with the same sex in the sense of we've I've had very uh, heartfelt, deep discussions mm-hmm. with with some of my guy friends. Probably yeah. more so than a girlfriend, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah of yeah. course. Yeah. yeah. What and mean, and course? so those, well, I have very close guy friends that I can open up to. Not many, not, not many. That many girlfriends in general do that. No, I'm saying I'm, I'm impressed because not many people in general have very deep, intimate discussions with. Any sex, yeah, <laughs> either sex. Yeah, no. so this I would say that th- that that is accurate. And honestly, Matt and I were hanging out with a friend who was out of town recently, and he's straight. And he said after the evening, we had like a really good conversation for multiple hours. He's like, I really wish you guys lived closer to me because he was like, I don't have these conversations with my straight friends. Oh. I don't know what it is about like straight men not willing to open up in this way, but like it's one of the many reasons I appreciate you too. And so like I would say two things: one, straight men get more gay friends. We're great listeners, but also <laughs> um, straight friends be better, listen, <laughs> confide. That's what we're all here for: is to connect. It's you know what? It's a it's a societal thing. Yeah, you know, yeah. you're not supposed to cry if you're a guy. I know that um, you know. Growing up, you 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 didn't even hug guys. Men would not hug each other. Yeah, it was just, it was just like if you do it, it's like a pat on the back, like a yeah. you know. I I, th- I don't think. Like, yeah, in my experience, it hasn't been this way just because I've attract you know I'm a sensitive soul. I've been I've attracted other sensitive guys into my life. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I don't get along so well with ago, the. If you would have felt that way no i mean maybe i would be a completely different person 20 years ago i mean you're right it's definitely like especially i can remember one time when i was eight years old i was riding my bike way too fast and slammed into a stone wall and broke my wrist and i'm sobbing because my bones are broken oh and jesus christ this guy comes up and goes stop crying you're a man and yeah. thank wow. god even at age eight i had the wherewithal to be like you dipshit, my bones are broken. Of course I'm going to cry. What is wrong with you? You little Frank. And he, he was also wearing very unattractive gray sweats, so I was like, just figure your own shit out before you talk to me. All right. Um, you say this is an eight-year-old? An eight-year-old child with a broken wrist. Two different men, actually, and now I'm never remembering. There was this sweats guy who, ugh, but also my next-door neighbor who like was like, Frank, come on, you can't be crying that much. It can't hurt that much. I was like, why don't I break your wrist and slam it into a wall, and you can tell me how it feels. Fuck and then I'll be like, Barry, don't cry so much. Fuck it, of shit yeah but it's, but it's society tells you you know don't cry there's yeah. no crying in baseball that whole thing you know yeah. so i guess i i have been intimate with men emotionally 
Yes, it's you so, have. Yeah. I think but it's maybe about, not sexually. What did the sneaky freaks have to say? Well, I think it's about, oh, well, I had a second answer. I'm going to throw in real quick. Um, throw I, it in. Like, just get it in there. Um, I think, you know, about it's about conversation, but it's also about something as small and genuine as like eye contact. Because the other intimate moment I was going to say was like Matt and I on one of our first dates and like the moment I fell in love with him was when we were like lying there just staring into each other's eyes. We weren't even doing anything in particular, just like looking at each other and smiling and laughing. And I remember those feelings like blossoming in that moment. And now I'm going to cry. Yeah. No, it was great. It was very special, romantic. Uh, I mean, he came over Friday night. Uh, he didn't leave till Monday morning. We canceled everything we had all weekend to be with each other. And after that 63 hour date, we said that we were in love, that we wanted to be together forever and that we wanted to be boyfriends. And this was after three dates and a week and a half of dating. So we moved fast, y'all. But Holy we just celebrated shit. seven years on February Congratulations. 7th. Congratulations. So sometimes the craziness is real. The intimacy is real. Look into each other's eyes. Wait, so the weekend the weekend wasn't the first... It was the first date or not? It was not. It was the, uh, the th- third date. Wow. Yes. Uh, we were on a reality show tidying up with Marie Kondo, and they edited it to make it seem like it was the first date. I forgot date about and, that. Right. Uh, show. <laughs> thank you. And yeah, so now everyone who has Netflix is like, you got together after the first date? I'm like, no, I have standards. It was the third. God. <laughs> me, and, me and Dee's was the first, so I, I, I hear you. Let's yeah. hear it, Cam. Okay, so... You sneaky freaks, we text you on a weekly basis these these riveting questions, and you do us the favor of texting us back. If you want to participate, give us a text at 310-356-3920. Okay, so the question of the week, what's the most intimate you've been with someone of the same sex? We had Drew who said, I've been a bottom, made out, rimmed, been rimmed, sucked, and been sucked. (laughs) I have stories for days. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Drew. Well, Drew, Drew, <laughs> no one would accuse you of being conservative. All, right. <laughs> All sorts of shit going on there. Lisa said, I had an actual relationship with a female for a few years. That ended because she was way on the DL and I wasn't down with being someone's dirty secret anymore. Mm. Anyways, that wasn't much, but we didn't, there wasn't much we didn't do uh, intimately except no butt stuff. Have you ever been uh, the, on this dirty secret to someone? Uh, my first boyfriend, yes. Oh. Um, yeah, he was a uh, cheerleader, uh, hold your mockery. And uh, <laughs> yes, queer leader. We fulfilled the stereotype. I'm sorry. But, um, oh, my God. Yeah, he, uh, I don't know. He, he. I didn't even have a crush on him at first because like, I just didn't think he was queer. And then one night, oh, it's ridiculous. So um, on my on my 21st birthday, he kind of was like, hey, you know, I've done stuff with guys before, so wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, Wow. And I didn't feel ready that night, but then another night he came over and we were watching Jennifer's Body and that lesbian kiss happened and on screen and one thing led to another and, you know, we we dated. So, yes, uh, for all those at home, a lesbian kiss did inspire a gay kiss. (laughs) Sexuality's fluid. Yeah, Um, I mean, I was in a similar type of position with your father, actually. The dirty secret? Yeah, it was the dirty secret. He would. He was dating someone. And he was he, dating someone, and then he dropped her off and take me out. Look at uh, that. Or I should say, take me in. Did, how does it feel to be a dirty secret? After a while, it gets. It, it's not fun. If at the beginning it's fun and exciting, it's exciting. And, and and I don't even approve of it now. I think it's rude. I mean, it's rude. It's rude. <laughs> yeah, I'd say it's it, rude. It is impolite it's, 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 in this civilized society. It's, it's, it's very impolite to, for someone to cheat on someone else. <laughs> it is impolite of your father to cheat with me. Was okay, but anyway, the bottom line is, eventually, it gets old, and you're like, okay, choose me or her, and he chose her, and I'm like, fuck you very much. <laughs> Were you ever concerned he was going to cheat on you later on in the relationships? Because mm. nope. <laughs> you're like once you go me you don't go at anyone else that's right no one ever cheated on me and if they did they get smacked upside the head once oh you go Karen Lee, it's me and only me what, what was your experience with being the dirty secret oh so i think like yeah unfortunately i did not have your mom's dignity at the time so i would ask for more and receive less to the point where oh. he one time said to me you're in the bottom 25% of all people I've hooked up with. You're lucky to be with me. What the fuck? Okay, fuck no, let's start, like, that. Like, fuck that guy. No, 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 no. Yeah. Well, we, we yeah. have learned. Sneaky freaks, if you hear that kind of <laughs> shit, you better be in the top 5%. Mm-hmm. Not Maybe at the top 1%. I think Who that, says honestly, it? a very insecure person who's closeted at the time. And so I, I am able... I actually met That's up with him years later. A narcissist, him, by the way. A narcissist <laughs> to the nth degree. Um, and like... 
I was able, I met up with him several years later and I've been able to forgive him because he, you know, clearly was in a state of confusion on his own and I, you know, had nothing to gain from holding a grudge. But that being said, I think you're, Karen Lee, you're completely right. When someone says you're in the bottom 25%, you should hear top 5% because that is a very insecure uh. person who's trying to bring you down like that. And there is no way they mean that. You should they also are trying to control and hurt you. You should never talk to that person again. No, exactly. And <laughs> I, I did break up with him shortly thereafter. Not fast enough, but like, believe you me, I would never accept any kind of treatment anywhere close to that these days. Matt's even like slightly grumpy in the morning. I'm like, you watch your tone, young lady. So, like, um, I love it. I love it. What else know, have we got there? It oh. does get better. Uh, Liz says, I've kissed and made out with a woman. I used to read erotica to a whole group of my coworkers during our breaks. We started with the beauty series by Anne Rice. That was mm. fun. Everyone had a good time teasing me about being able to read without getting tongue tied and embarrassed. <laughs> Would you ever read? Fucking erotica to coworkers. Yes, you. you <laughs> would. I mean, I, I am your coworker. I, not I, and I've read erotica with you, <laughs> For, especially when it comes to educated. Not that to bring up educated again. Um, no, yeah, I, I've definitely like when I've been with a bunch of girls, we pull out the um, my secret garden. Mm -hmm. I was at at the wedding this weekend. There was a little area in the in the venue that was called my secret garden. Ooh. I was dying to bring someone there. And what happened? There what, was not what, one what, single fucking person at the wait, wedding besides what, what's me. What's supposed to go on there? What the fuck do you think is supposed to go on in the what, secret a little, garden? A little sex, sex garden? Secret fucking sex garden, like yeah. the wedding just, had a sex garden? Yeah. yeah. Like it was advertised as such? It was advertised as a secret garden. I don't know why it would be so secret if, mm. if it were not for sex. I mean, I've heard of photo booths and caricatures, and now they do sex gardens. Yeah, I guess so. I haven't been to a wedding in a long time. Did I they? mean, this is a weird, I mean, it was a wild venue. Well, I assume then they offered as a uh, counter-programming Greek line dancing. Is that right? Or? <laughs> <laughs> it, it was salsa, actually. It was ah, a Cuban sure, wedding. They didn't sure, do sure. the horror. No, there was okay. no horror. Right. It's not a Jewish wedding, mother. Mm. All right. Marley says, I've showered with plenty of my close friends drunkenly in college. Which I've done as well, by the way. Oh, mm. now the truth comes out. Yeah, I didn't even think about that as, <laughs> you were as an act. Dick? But I was not grabbing dick, but I was definitely naked in a shower with other men. Lightly before. fondling dick? Was that what we were hearing? I, I, no, I didn't. No, there wasn't that much fondling at all. Patching took us. <laughs> oh my God. The tuchus needs to be scrubbed. <laughs> Audra says, made love. Uh, Tom. Elder statesman. Mm, oh, of no, course, we love of him. Course. No, I love him. He says, uh, age 15 or 16, my male friend and I knew a girl a couple years older who would let us feel her tits, met her in a wooded area, and talked into fingering her pussy. Okay, just a little sidebar. Once again, we're in a wooded area. Why Tom is, he is constantly in nature. He's a nature boy. He's seven years old. He's I don't, We haven't heard of one sexual experience that's been indoors. Wood for Wait wood, y'all. But I don't even know where does it, where does this come to the question that we're talking okay, about. Okay, so he's going. He goes on. He goes in return for, for her. You know, or she's gonna finger her pussy. Uh, he was going to. Uh, she demanded to see our cocks, so we dropped our shorts. We fingered her, and she told us to rub our cocks together, oh. and we humped for a minute or so. Mm. She then kissed the head of our cocks and stroked us till we came. Didn't take long to jizz in the pine needles. <laughs> My only threesome. With, an, with a frowny face. Oh. <laughs> Wait a second. That is, like, very erotic, though. That whole very thing. erotic. Like she was a little, like, wow, yeah. BDSM cougar type. That was very she was fucking, tambien. Like, wow. Yeah, yeah. she's yeah. taking ownership of this shit. And, again, with the pine needles... Well, he He's likes it. Into the know, pine needles. He likes it. My it's natural. Mother came over this week and uh, showed us her new hobby of weaving baskets from pine needles. So this is a very different use of pine needles, <laughs> but you know, whatever makes you happy. <laughs> uh, we got Justin who says uh, full 100% fluid exchange sexual intercourse or sodomy, I guess, depending on how <laughs> Old Testament you're feeling. We got some sneaky freaks over here. I'll tell you. We did. Getting uh, biblical. <laughs> And we got Victor who said, I was at a nightclub one time, drunk out of my mind, and I don't remember much, but I do have a small recollection of being in my car with a guy that is asking me, how do you know you're not gay if you've never tried it? Mm. I'm pretty sure nothing happened because my anus did not hurt or anything oh. like that. We'll never go to that nightclub again. Or he was gentle, so. Yeah. <laughs> Victor, who knows what happened there? I guess that if that's the most intimate you've been, you, do you think you're missing out? 
if if you have never explored with the opposite or the same sex. I think as a heterosexual. Would, yeah, would I? Are you gold that, standard or gold that, gold whatever that's called? No, I that's have a gold coin. No, tell no, me gold what the coin. Bitcoin. It's Bitcoin. Bitcoin. I'm a Bitcoin guy. <laughs> yeah. um, What's it called? Gold star. Gold star. No, tell me what the label is. I guess because I have uh, meaning that you have never had sex with a woman. No, fingered and oral sex, but not uh, penetrative sex. So then you're a gold star. Yeah. Wow. Is, is that the standard? I thought like you got like uh, extra points for like not not touching it at all. I think platinum. I don't know. I we don't have, know. we no, had an episode. I am C-section, but I have also touched vaginas, so you know I'm confounding. Oh, I see. On, I on see. You're like a little the mixed metal. Mixed metal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hilarious. like having my metal revoked for like you know drug use. That's that's sort of the situation that I'm in. <laughs> oh my god. So do you think that it's something that that straight guys or straight women are missing out on by not exploring? I guess where I feel is like I. It's not for everybody, but I guess. I think it's wrong-headed to be so ardent about it and be like, no, absolutely never. Like, for instance, I was one time at like an event for this studio I worked for, and these two guys were talking, and one was like, how much would you have to be paid to like kiss a guy? He was like, oh, dude, like a million dollars. I'm like, okay. First of all, you're at this studio event getting free food. You do it for lunch, let's be honest. <laughs> but secondly, <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, th that's what I mean. Like, don't hold it up on some... Pe don't put the penis on a pedestal. Like, be open to like open friendships with people and if you have feelings for like one person that's great if that means physicalizing it beautiful if that just means you feel closer to this friend than anybody else in the world that's lovely i think that's where i like sort of get on my own pedestal here of like just be open to whatever it is and i think try not to i don't know have such like a long list of don'ts because you might miss out on something really nice with someone was very well said and well, beautiful well answered. i mean i used to ask this question a little a little off topic here to a friend of mine who um he was much more obviously open-minded than most of the guys my age at that time because he's been doing this since he's in his 20s but i he, he was into uh, anyone who was transgendered mm -hmm. and so what he would say is i said what would happen to a heterosexual guy if um he was making out with this girl that he picked up at a bar and get real hot and heavy. They went back to you know someone's place. They started messing around, and all of a sudden, the woman pulls out her dick, and he said every one of the guys would continue to go for it. And I said, I don't know. I think that society is ingrained so much, you know, homophobia that I think mm. a lot of them wouldn't. Well, yeah. What are your thoughts on it, guys? So this is something actually I've been really impressed by with Euphoria this season. Without giving away too many spoilers, like there's a trans. Uh, teenager named Jules and she you do sort of get more of an idea of what's going on uh with her genitals this season but not in a way that feels like very like you know just voyeuristic and like ooh, what's going on down there it's more like this is a teenager who has a sex drive and is going to have sex with people and I think the way it was done was really well to me because like it you can't you know you want to treat everyone like a person and I think it's easy to obsess over someone's genitals especially trans people are subject to that all the time but it too would be wrong, I think, to treat them like nothing's happening there and treat trans people like they don't have sex ever because of course they do. So to me, like it was very humanizing and beautiful. And I guess like I kind of have the same opinion here where like, yeah, in an ideal world, you wouldn't have someone so obsessed with like whether it's a penis, a vagina or somewhere in between, but just kind of like I care for this person. This person's beautiful. Whatever I find it down there, I'm going to be happy with. Um, but but I, I think it's a generational thing because I'm yeah. telling you guys like your dad's age cam. Mm hmm. They would flip out if they, I mean, I guess it's kind of deceptive too to not know if you're, you know, kissing a man or, a, or, you know, kissing a traditional man or a woman. I don't know if it's deceptive, but it would be surprising for sure for me. Well, I'm I telling you that guys would get angry. I, I wouldn't, my anger would not be my response. Well, that, would, this is why I'm saying there's been a shift in our mindsets mm -hmm. over the last, like, even maybe 10 years. Well, because now, they, like, it's not so important to, like, you know, pass per se. Like, you would have maybe it was in a bygone era, like, you know, more important to pass as a cis woman for survival purposes. But, yeah. like, one thing I think is beautiful about Gen Z is their understanding of sexuality and gender is so much more inclusive and open-minded so you can ha have someone even with like several different terms like you know trans masculine non-binary assigned female at birth like which that would just tie my dad's tongue but um <laughs> you know yeah. people of a certain age understand that like it is an expression and uh varies person to person and you know there's much more to it than just like what's below the belt but i would love it if some sneaky freeze would weigh in and 
tell us what your thoughts are on that issue. Yeah, I would love that. We have a few more responses. Should we yeah. should we uh, wrap it up with this? Sure. Yeah, and one thing I'll actually just add is generally I am all for Gen Z and their new terms, but I learned a new one the other day, which was like polycule. It's when um, <laughs> you know, know a person I know. knows a person who but doesn't know the other person. Y'all, that's just friendship. I'm sorry. Like we do not need to invent a new term for friendship. Okay, like it. Six, wait, is there wait, like I Kevin poly- Bacon, six degrees of separation. They described it as like it's a it's a platonic relationship where person A knows person B and person C knows person B, but person A and person C don't know each other. I'm like, that's just friendship or an H2O molecule is a good uh, example of that. And th- perhaps my understanding of it is wrong, but the way it was explained to me, I was like, so friends. They're like, no, but like it's, I was like, no, these are friends. Why are we talking Well, I, th- th- I think it's people that are connected to each other through a non-monogamous relationship. So people, are, it's like a circuit that people okay. are fucking each so other. So it was, it was, con- oh, okay. So that would make perfect sense to me versus like it was conveyed to me as like, oh, this is a platonic thing. That's no, why no, no, I was no, no. I don't off. know what the fuck yeah. you guys are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> if, you're po- if you're poly and you're hooking up yeah. with, with different people, okay, it's anyone who's there yeah. also hooking up with, you end up in this little circuit with, right? It's basically. It's oh, like a, your pod. Okay. With okay, a, you okay, know, okay, COVID okay. pod, there's a poly it's pod. It's what I call uh, Peyton Place or one of these... <laughs> TV shows that everybody ends up poking out, or basically my friend, my friend group from back home in Chicago. Okay, so thank you. The <laughs> Everyone is hooked up with each other. The, the sexual component very much clarified that. It's a polycule. If it's sexual, it's a friendship. If it's platonic, <laughs> let it be now and teach the children. I mean, there's polyamory. There's, uh, what is the other one called? Pan-se- pansexual. Oh my God, mom. These are different things. All right, <laughs> moving on. Alyssa says, strictly just making out. I once did a three-way kiss with a girl and a guy in high school. Mm. We Sounds got a three- another triple kiss. Triple kiss. Uh, Cassie says, uh, sexually, I've done everything but penetrate someone of the same sex. Intimately, it's a long story. Oh. See, that's what I'm saying. There's a, you got the There's a difference sex, there. Sex and intimate. And you said... We said, what's the most intimate you've been with someone of the yes. same sex? So maybe we should have s- specified what's the most sexual, which I think we talked about doing. But the last one I wanted to share was Amanda's, who says, uh, my friend Chelsea, also a sneaky freak, and I fell off of those skiing conveyor belts and pissed ourselves at the same time looking into each other's eyes. <laughs> I don't know where to begin. Is that is like, intimate. It's like golden showers in the mountain. What is that? <laughs> That's exactly. I mean, I don't think they were sh- they were showering themselves. What is that? <laughs> that is. Uh, uh, that's very intimate. Quite intimate. I've never pissed into someone I while am, pissing while looking at someone's I eyes. I'm here by copywriting my... the erotica title "Golden Showers in the Mountain." You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> I have held up one of my friends in a bathroom when there were ants all over the ground, and she had to pee. So I had to hold her up while she was peeing so that she didn't... You're holding the arms? I'm holding the arms while she's peeing. And she's squatting? And ants all over the goddamn oh floor. Oh, my fucking God. Was, I oh. guess that's considered intimate, but it's def- it was more like safety or... Now, when you say, <laughs> were these like aunts who were related to her or like ants the bugs? <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Now it's time to move along. Uh, we're getting that really was, corny now. That was Beducate Yourself presented by Beducated. No one knows shit about sex. And that's the problem. Why? I don't know because maybe they're not getting the right training. It's not too late to learn how to be a sex pro, you sneaky freaks. And how do they do that? Beducated. Beducated is like the Netflix of sexual wellness. That's right. It's an incredible online platform where they bring together these world-renowned sex educators and they teach you everything you'd ever want to know about sex. And who doesn't need a little extra help no matter how experienced you are? That's exactly right. They provide techniques and information to level up your love life. That's right. Anything you can want to know. Right now, here are the courses I'm extremely excited about. Oh, no. You ready for this? Yes. I mean, they got simple things like sensual vulva massage. That's a good one. And then they got more advanced things like semen retention. They even have courses ranging to sexual health education, like destigmatizing STIs, which you know I got a lot of hangups around. I could take that course. I'd love that shit. But seriously, folks, whatever you're interested in, Beducated has you covered. And they're going to give you amazing courses that are easy to follow with video, audio, and written guides. And here's a very hot tip. You can get 70% off Beducated's yearly pass. Wow. Yeah, with our code sex talk. That's one word. Just go to beducated.com and use our code sex talk for 70% off, and you'll be locked in for life with that discount. That's beducated, B E D U C A T E D.com, and use code sex talk. The link is in our episode description. 
So stop complaining about your sex life and do something about it. Boom. Moot, I'm doing some spring cleaning. As you should. And I discovered some very old crusty lube bottles. Oh, that's gross. Why didn't you get something from Like a Kitten? Like a Kitten, they make incredible subscription sex boxes, meaning every season, like this spring, you can get a box of sexy essentials delivered right to your door. The people at Like a Kitten are expert curators, and they select beautiful pleasure products. Oh, yeah. This this spring box has a pink glass dildo, flowered glass kegel balls, even a flower pot with beautiful seeds for daisies, sunflowers, and roses, so you can really luxuriate in spring. That's beautiful. Yes, and... They're going to tickle all of your senses, okay? They're thinking of everything. So if you're sick of going to sex toy shops and getting inundated with all these choices, get yourself a subscription box to Like a Kitten, and they'll send you a seasonal box. You know what I like about it? The spring subscription box is only $79, which is a great deal since most of the products in the box retail for well over $150. And a portion of all Like a Kitten sales goes to charities to empower women and support their education and health. So how does one get a Like a Kitten box, Cam? Well, to celebrate spring, Like a Kitten is offering our listeners 15% off and free shipping when you go to likeakitten.com slash mom or enter code mom at checkout. Just go to likeakitten.com slash mom or use code mom at checkout for 15% off these incredible boxes likeakitten.com slash mom. The link is in this episode's description. This spring, your flower will thank you. Moving right along, Cam, how's your life been? My life has been good. I was in a, I was in Miami this past weekend. Welcome nice. to Miami. Yes. And uh, I, what you I was there for a wedding. Of there? I could see the, the appeal. What's the appeal? The people are very laid back. Mm. I love the Latin culture. You would not be very good as far as the mask mandates. Literally no masks. Mm -hmm. where, where was I? Oh, I went to a museum and I was the only one wearing a mask. Yes, of and literally someone came up to me and was like, what are you do you doing? work here? <laughs> <laughs> because I was wearing it. And I was like, no, if I worked here, I also wouldn't be wearing a fucking mask. Because no one, not even the workers are wearing masks here. You must here. not be from here. That's correct. <laughs> that, <laughs> that is exactly right. I would like right. to know how many COVID tests you took. I took one before I left. And then, you know, one this morning when I got back. And so far? No COVID no so COVID. far. Yay. Yes. Uh, I did. I was the only single man at this wedding. I think I was the only single person at this fucking wedding. A single person in yes. general. I was, I was, was uh, single wedding? most of the weekend. Single Pringle. All right. Was it, this a large wedding? Uh, 150 people. And you were the only? So when I you think say so. single most Even of the weekend, kids? did you have a brief relationship over the weekend? Uh, is that what we're hearing? Or? No, no. I also was I was single the entire weekend, mm -hmm. it turned out. Mm -hmm. I tried to get a date on Field. <gasps> nice, nice. I, I love that Field is your preferred app, by the way. I feel like when that's I'm an traveling, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You got to. I, and I said on the app, I got one night here. Let's make the most of it. Oh, my oh. God. Yeah. And then I matched with someone who was looking for a daddy. Uh, yeah. Wait, hold oh, the phone, see? hold the phone. Look at me. Daddy? <laughs> yes, daddy. You're, you're the daddy? Yes. Sex I was talk with my mom and daddy. <laughs> I, would, I, would, I daddy. fucking said, hey, I'm a, I'm a fucking daddy. I can make this happen. And uh, what, Wait, is sugar daddy? No, not like sugar daddy. <laughs> They're barking up the wrong the tree. The visceral there. reaction you, everyone... you had to sugar daddy. <laughs> no. <laughs> I cannot spare a cent on you. <laughs> no, there's not a fucking sugar daddy. And then, so then I, I, uh, she was kind of, uh, she was not into the idea that I was only there for a night. So then we didn't end up meeting up at this bar that I still ended up going to. Looking, mm. looking for Mr. Goodbar, Mrs. Goodbar. Yes. I was alone in Miami at a bar sober. Not a f great feeling. <laughs> Though I will say like dating apps are great for um, getting local bar recommendations. So that was a very smart move. I didn't even get the local bar recommendation. I went, I found one of my own. Yeah. Not that, <laughs> by the way, I am not advocating for being like, hey, where's the cool hangout? Okay. And ghosting people. That was not my point. More it, just that locals yeah. will know. Was this like a no, club yeah, totally. atmosphere? It kind of was. So, so I was how trying are you to just have a conversation standing there. I felt a little awkward at first. Did you pay to get in? Didn't pay to get in. Oof. It was outdoor, which I liked. Mm -hmm. Was it called Nikki's Bar? No. Oh. It was called 1-800-LUCKY. Oh. That was the name and of the bar. you didn't get lucky yes, and lucky? And not I did the number not. you called when you did not have a date. <laughs> that that is point. correct. <laughs> so I left, I left the oh, bar. Wait, I saw a cute girl. On, I left the bar back promptly. It up, back what? It up. <laughs> you walked in fully masked up. 
Outdoor yes. glasses, theme. No, no, no. It was outdoors, so I couldn't take the mask off. Oh, you took the mask off. Mask off, mm-hmm. walked That's into the bar, and I saw a cute girl there, and then I got intimidated. Five, four, three, two, one, you didn't act? I, I hung around for about 10 minutes, and then I left the bar. Mm-hmm. I felt awkward. Why? And then I And then I left, and then I said, you know what? I just did this la- the other week, and I talked about it on the podcast. I felt ashamed at the time. I felt ashamed on the show. I'm gonna make a difference. I'm gonna make a change. Yeah. No. I'd be the be the change, right? Yeah. Five, four, Hell three, yeah. two, one. Yeah. So Mel fucking went, went right back into the bar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lingered around for a little longer. Yeah. Kind of positioned myself so that I can start talking to the group. Yeah. Started talking to the group. Awesome. And then uh, turns out she was not the sweetest. She was not yeah. the was friendliest. She was mm-hmm. kind of a bitch. Um, well, fuck that shit. Leave her. <laughs> I so I did I, w- I was dis- I was a little disappointed. Five, four, three, two, one, turn around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, the, the, I made an error. I made two errors. Number one, I told her uh, that I was uh, stood up at the bar, and that's why I was there alone. Okay, I shouldn't have done that. No, it immediately puts you at a disadvantage. Well, first of all, it was a lie because the person never even agreed to come to meet me at the bar, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I could see that as a tactic of some sort to like justify while I was there. Yeah, maybe, but still, it makes you look like a loser. I should have just fucking said, "I'm traveling. I don't know anyone here, so I yes. came to a fucking bar." That's, that's a, it. Would have been, been better. Yes. Instead. All right. I, that's, live, live and learn. It's counterintuitive, but you are, I think you are super right. The transparency actually works better for people. Like, what, well, I, of course. I mean, I want to... Oh God, Wait, why so, is this counterintuitive? So, yeah. No, because like, okay, so look, when I was like a teenager, I still didn't know how to approach people. So like I was with some straight friends and we walked up to some women on the beach and I was like so intimidated and didn't know what to say. So I was just like, God, I'm embarrassed, but it's true. I was like, hey, so um, my friends and I were having a debate and they were like, okay, we were like, we were debating what the best way to approach pretty women on the beach is. Is it to come up with a fake survey so you can start conversation or is it just to say hello? And they were like, hello would have been fine. Oh. I was like, okay. They talked to us for an hour. They were very sweet. Um, but like, yeah, the fact that I didn't just say hi is like mortifying that I needed a, like an in or something. I, so. I, I had to learn this. It is, it is one of those muscles that you just got to practice enough times and eventually you feel yeah. comfortable. If you would stop thinking of them as someone you want to pick up and just think of like, well, I just want to meet people. It's just awkward. You're alone. You feel like a loser it, it approaching is. a group of four people. Also, it is hard, but you got to just buck it up and do it and push yourself. Like I push myself with those cops. And here's the thing. Like, what? Come again? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I was, cops? There, I was in an upscale bar in uh, the Viagra Triangle, and that's in Chicago. This was with my partner in crime. Mm-hmm. And she and I were sitting at a table. We see all these two guys. They're sitting at the table. And we see all these cops walking up and saying hello to them. So, but they were playing clothes. And I looked at them and I looked at my girlfriend. I said, I bet they're cops. She's like, yeah. I go, watch this. I just walk right up to the cops and I go, so which one of you guys want to handcuff me? <laughs> oh my fucking God. LP Score. Excellent work. Did you meet someone that you liked? Oh yeah. Oh my God! We started a conversation. I brought nice. the my partner over. She, of course, took dibs on the better-looking ones, who turns out to be the asshole. I got the nice guy and the funny guy, so it's all good. So I think oh, there are two ways to handle this. One is like groups actually are safer to approach versus because at least when you're in the group, you feel safe. So you're like, oh yeah, I can talk to somebody. And like, I think generally speaking, people will give you a vibe pretty right away if like it's hey, it's just us night, or if they're like, oh, you're cool, I'll talk to you. But the other strategy I've employed... Um, Wait, can with, we just piggyback up of that? That strategy is good because yeah. you can't take anything personally. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if, if, the, if they say, yeah, we're just having a girls' night, you can't take it personally. Oh, they didn't like me. Wah. No, they're yeah. having a girls' night. And, uh, and conversely, yeah. if they start talking to you, they start talking to you. And, and exactly right. And unfortunately, like, yeah, some people can't iterate it that way and they'll just maybe be cold. But like, it, you know, you learn to read the signs of, like you said, Karen, Lee, like, oh, well, they're just having a them night. This is not to do with me. It's not. And that's what I had to realize. Like, oh, it's not like if I were taller, if I were better looking, they would want my advances. They just are not interested in this right now. Mm. And that's totally fine. But the other way I've uh, made it work when I'm alone is, and maybe this is more like club than bar per se, but like I just 
come off like I'm having the best time in the world and I don't need anyone. You like dancing I, by yourself? Yeah, actually, absolutely. Like I was in Europe you by myself too. and I, I had a few drinks and this was my regular strategy. I had a few drinks, would be on the dance floor by myself, just smiling, looking like I have a good time. And I regularly got approached by people being like, and literally they would say, you look like you're having so much fun. And I was like, I am. I'm Frank. Nice to meet you. Oh, um, I am. Frank I'm Frank. Frank. And, and so, I love that. And sometimes I got the opposite reaction, but it still worked out where one time these two people came up to me and they're like, oh, you look so lonely. Want to hang with us? I was like, I feel like I look great, but I still got what I wanted. <laughs> so I'm just going to let I mean, go. <laughs> the dancing thing, Cam, you're a great dancer. Thank you. Sneaky Priest. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys knew this. Cam's a great dancer. Great wow. Yeah. I, did, I, I don't think you've ever complimented me in that way before. Yeah, you are. Thank you. And so is your brother. Your that's sister, what it, your, That's what I hear. My brother's a great dancer. He's also a great dancer. Not Neither of you got it from me, unfortunately. Oh, I've been to a Christine and the Queens concert with the two of them. They both got rhythm. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, I forgot about that. But it doesn't even matter if you're a good dancer or not. If you, I did this too. I walked up a group of six guys and I said, which one of you guys wants to dance with me? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. someone stepped up and that was it. See, that's the kind of like bravado and like playfulness that I like. Like I do not advocate negging or like taking someone down a peg, but like lightly pitting people against each other like that, that I think is great. That's just mm. fun, loving and spirited. I think they were all just too chicken to, to do anything except for the one guy. That except said, for the one who ah, did. You found the one. All it takes is one. Yeah, just, just takes one. Do you think it's easier if... It, it, is it better to just go alone like a like a lone wolf to approach a group of people or do you go up with friends is that too in, in, like intimidating like say two I, guys I think it, it it doesn't really matter as long as you have the confidence We interviewed Derek Pierce on this subject a, you know porn star Yeah and we know he, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh currently do you do you like Derek <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what the hell that is but anyway <laughs> Um, he was, he really spelled it out. So you guys should go back and listen to the podcast with Derek Pierce because he spelled out how he approached tables of women. And I think he was pretty successful at it. Yeah, that was episode number. Come on, Cam. What was it? Fuck <laughs> that <laughs> shit. <laughs> Derek Pierce. Derek Pierce, porn star. Right. Did, did you have something that you were going to say that? Yeah, I strongly feel that like if I had to put a fraction to it, I feel like whether you successfully engage with someone is 80% whether they want to or not, yes. and twenty percent what you say. I love so, that. So, like, you know, please take a little bit of the pressure off yourself. Like, feel free to have a mode and a line, go for it. But like, know that at the end of the day, often it is not that you did it wrong; it's that they weren't in the right headspace for it. Yeah, you. agreed. But if you're well, on a dance floor, you're myself. more likely to get yeah. someone who's going to be wanting to dance. Absolutely, it's clear what you're what you're wanting to do. Yeah. And so, how this story ends is basically, I I call the Uber, and then I, of course I I'm, I look around. There's another cute girl. I was like, why was I focused on this one cute girl the whole fucking time? There's oh. cute girls all over the fucking place oh my gosh how many times yeah fixating on one person and there's a whole room full of people i that didn't is even such realize a it yeah, uh, next time so i'm Not building that. i'm building up the, the strength i realize okay yeah. the, from the first yeah. experience you just go in you just fucking linger and talk to someone this time okay if the, that one doesn't work out there's another one that's probably there and that was what else worked out great in europe was like i got like i got rejected plenty like people who just didn't want to hang out with me or whatever and i was just like all right moving on like yeah. you know you just you, on to the next that's right mm -hmm. Anyway, so that's that's uh, my life update. It's Don Miguel Ruiz, The Four Agreements. Mm -hmm. Never take anything personally. Mm -hmm. That was not Num exactly not, my point that I was making three. there, but... <laughs> yeah, uh, that's your point? No, but I'm glad that you threw that in there. All right. Um, my grandmother used to say, God rest her soul in heaven, if you had any idea how little people actually think about you, you would be stunned. Yeah, and I love that quote. That's, yeah. a, that's a famous quote. I forgot who said that. Yeah, we devote so much time to like agonizing. And it's like for them, that was a casual dismissal. And then they were talking to their friends like they were not thinking, you believe that guy approached me. So if it's ephemeral for them, let it be ephemeral for you. Or you can do another thing I did in my single days. I would just say, you know, you look like this famous actor. And they're, they're like, who? I'm mm. like, I can't think of the name. Who is it? Who is it? Is it Brad Pitt? Oh, that's good. No, oh, my God. That's so funny. I made the mistake one time of talking to a gentleman who I thought was very attractive um, and said, you know, you look like a more attractive Steve Buscemi. Oh, did he not take oh, that one? Oh, so, my God. Because he's, he's, he's a more, more attractive. attractive. And he was very attractive, but, like, he had some facial similarities, but all he heard was the Steve Buscemi, and I was, oh I was locked out at that point. Always um, go with Brad Pitt. Do not do the Steve Buscemi. <laughs> no, I, well, now I know better. Whereas my sister, she's an actress, and she, like, when she uh, doesn't get a call back, she'll be in the elevator with a bunch of like actresses who are sad and you know <laughs> look like her because that's how it always goes and she will just kind of lighten the mood by going well i guess they weren't casting for attractive talented people <laughs> <laughs> that's right yeah. 
As you know, I just went on vacation. Yeah, how was that? It was wonderful, except the mattresses that I was sleeping on were garbage. I hate that. I was just craving to come home and sleep atop my Helix Sleep mattress. Incredible, incredible mattresses. You know what's great about a Helix Sleep? What is it? They give you a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete and matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Why would you buy a mattress made for someone else? I completely agree. That's why I think that's why my mattress fits me so well. I took the quiz ahead of time. They asked me a bunch of questions like, do I prefer a soft, meaty, or firm mattress? If I get overheated in my sleep, do I experience back pain upon waking up? Yes. They got mattresses for all of these needs. Not to mention menopausal women. Menopausal women, they have mattresses for menopausal women? Sure, you get hot flashes, you need a Helix Sleep mattress. You know, a good mattress is critical for good sex. Absolutely. So that's why we're telling you, if you're wanting a wonderful sex life, you need a wonderful Helix Sleep mattress. You don't want any springs springing all out when you're trying to have sex. Absolutely not. You take the quiz, you order the mattress that you're matched to, and the mattress comes right to your door, shipped for free. You don't ever need to go to a mattress store again. You know what else? Helix was awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2021 by GQ and Wired Magazine. It's a phenomenal mattress. Don't take our word for it. They're winning all these awards. They even have a 10-year warranty, and you can try it out for 100 nights risk-free. If you don't like it, they'll pick it up from your own door. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash Sex talk. Just go to helixsleep.com slash sex talk. You're going to have a wonderful mattress. You'll thank us, you little sneaky freaks. Mom, what is going on in your life? Um, I thought about this. Mm? Not a lot. What, 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 not Basically, a lot. Basically, I wrote down, I don't have a social life. I have doctor visit, visits. <laughs> 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 no, what's been going on in my TikTok is interesting, though. Oh, boy. Your I cyber des- life. Yeah, I've decided mm. that since the pandemic, I am. I hate tight jeans and bras so okay. i decided to wear only joggers mm. <laughs> and decided to ban the bra ban the bra. As, ban the bra as much as possible oh my because god why are we wearing bras why are women wearing bras they are very uncomfortable mm-hmm. i i can, i'm not wearing bras so i have every day for the last eight days videoed me wearing a shirt with no bra and in D's in the background going, woohoo. You're starting a movement? I'm D's, starting a movement. D's, D's approves? He, not only approves, he just got upset because I didn't have him in the last video saying something like, ba ba boom. Or, oh, my God. Anyway, and it's <laughs> it's getting quite a lot of traction from the males. Oh, my God. Not so much from the females. But, uh, yeah, there are a few females that, are, that, are, that do say complimentary things like, uh, I'm with you. Mm-hmm. Let's get rid of them. So that's about the excitement of my life, okay? You Banning stopped bra wearing and, bras. And, and not wearing <laughs> tight pants either. I mean, it, it's, it's getting a little ridiculous, but I'm comfortable. Now, for the I'm sake of parody, cool. my sister had a friend in high school who ended up being a restaurateur. Great guy, very nice. Um, but he uh, always felt like he had a little more on top than other gentlemen. And so he wanted to invent something called the bro, the man bra, oh, um, yeah. for added support. So you can either ban your bra or bras for everyone. Bras for everyone, <laughs> yes. Okay, thank you for that I life thought, update. I thought you'd like to hear about that. Should we move on to yeah. hit on or shit on? Yes, we should. Oh, hit on or <laughs> shit on. This is where we get to take your wonderful comments, wherever you leave them, on our TikTok page, Instagram, and uh, determine if they're a hit on or a shit on. <laughs> yeah, we, we we did get some very um, rude comments recently. Yeah, should we start with the one that, that uh, was sent to you? Yes. Rory Megami says... How old is your mom? Yeah, fuck you, Rory. I hate <laughs> ages. I'm always, what the hell do you need to know that information for? <laughs> fuck them. Jarek says, says, if this creator likes this and comments on this, I will not curb stomp the elderly. <laughs> what the I want to ask you, what the fuck did that mean? I have no clue what that fucking means. Curb stomp the elderly. I am now elderly. Can you I report to TikTok for elder abuse? I'm worried what's going on. I think I, that comment did get reported, to... actually. That's Go a ahead. fucked up shit. Yeah, yeah. He's yikes. not going to curb stomp the elderly. Like, if he saw me... He would just like kick me to the curb. No, no, no. curb stomp is when you like take someone's head and smash it against well, the curb. Well, that just happened to me a couple of weeks ago, but that was on my own volition. If my mom <laughs> yeah, understood you... social media. She is seventy-two years young and would be very unhappy to read that. So I'll have her write a strongly worded letter to the 
president of TikTok. Also, if this, why does the person really want you to like this and comment on this? Well, what is it? What? Is, why is that the threat? I'm always just like, you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. So if the creator likes this and comments on this, I will send an elderly person a, a lovely thing. package of chocolates. You yes, know? I, like, I, I would like it comments on that Thank shit. You. I would totally like that. I but he's saying so this, this person is saying this on. Our video. Well, yeah, how I, about the next one after that? Degeneracy is at its finest. Yes. Now what the fuck? I don't. I don't even know what that word means. That actually, legitimately, I feel it could go either way. <laughs> like a bisexual. The state <laughs> of or property of being degenerate. Okay. Yeah. But I feel like Sad. I associate degeneracy with debauchery, so yeah. that's why I'm kind of like, oh, that could be a hit. Yeah, on. I'm a fucking degenerate. Yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, reclaiming that be, it. That, that could be a hit on. Yeah, I yeah. think so. It's a hit on. It's a hit, hit on. Hit on. Uh, ding ding ding. <laughs> I I had a few encounters uh, with little kids this week. Oh no. Aww. And you could tell me whether these were a hit on or a shit on. Oh, almost uh, certainly shit on children. <laughs> I work with children. They're always shitting on you. Yeah, so I was at me. the airport oh, no. getting some clothes out of my bag. And this kid, seven-year-old kid comes up to me and goes, you good? I said, yeah, yeah, I'm good. What the fuck? And he goes, what's going on here? I was like, you're fucking seven. <laughs> Leave me the fuck alone. I'm, 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 I was looking very disheveled and, and shit, but leave me the fuck alone. Who oh, my you? God. Is that why you met? You, te you, you texted I texted you saying some kid just came up to me and asked, oh, you good? And then my sister writes, "You are you looking very harried right now? And I was. Mm. Uh, mm. And then I was at Little Cracker Barrel punk. this weekend. I've never been to Wait, Cracker Barrel. Why were you before. at Cracker Barrel? You go yeah. on a vacation, know. you end up at Cracker Barrel. It's I don't know why these fucking yeah. people wanted to go it's to Cracker Barrel. South of Mason Dixon, you eat a Cracker Barrel. North, you eat at Applebee's. That's the way it goes. So, my friend is talking to this, another little kid that just sat down next to us. Okay. Okay. And <laughs> where are these little punks coming from? <laughs> I don't know. There's punks all around. And he's going, and my friend is going, okay. He's explaining in our group of like 11 who everyone is. And he's like, they're a couple, they're a couple, they're a couple. He's single, they're a couple. A couple. And when he says he's single, he points at me, and a seven-year-old kid goes, I figured. Oh, okay. What the fuck? No matter how you slice it, that's not a hit on it. What that's the fuck? I said, no uh, he figured? Huh? That's a shit on it if I've ever heard one. I couldn't believe that oh fucking kid. What? Piece of shit. No respect, Sex talk with my mom is proud to be pro sex, but not pro creation. <laughs> Wear a condom, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that is true. That Fuck is that kid. Unreal. Yes. Wow. And that's... it wasn't the same kid. Oh, God. No, these are different kids, different locations. Come, I, no reason. I looked way less hairy at the Cracker Barrel. <laughs> <laughs> and if he had tracked my progress, he would have known. He would have <laughs> fucking known. Wow. Kids can be real mean. Did, My goodness. Did you have one, Frank, that you wanted oh, to share? I did. So um, a few months ago, I released the trailer for my show, which you can see at opentoitseries.com. Oh, I love also, the plug. I like to throw yeah. that little plug there. And that's where in April, uh, the first episode's going to be too. But um, yeah, so uh, Laganja Stranja, the famous drag queen from RuPaul's Drag Race, is one of our stars. And oh, wow. she very kindly um, you know, put the trailer up on her page and we got a lot of views there. And um, I couldn't help but clock several uh, comments from her followers that really made me giggle. So I'll share a few with you. So um, what's nice about her followers, I think, is they feel very connected to her and talk to her in very personal terms. So bestie, I'm gagging and legitimately thought I was watching a gay perfume commercial for the first 10 seconds because the guys do spritz themselves um, at the start of the commercial. So that oh. feels pretty unambiguously hit on to me. Like, oh, that's a hit. That is a hit. A hit on. Yeah. yeah. A perfume commercial. I would love to. Models. Mm -hmm. I'd love to star in a gay perfume commercial. Mm -hmm. um, that's a hit on. And then what's another one? Uh, oh, this one. This one's pretty nice, too. So, um, oh, wow. So happy for you. And I love that they feature you throughout the trailer. They know who's a star. Yes, God. Three fire emojis. Oh. oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. People like what you're making. Yeah. It's hitting on her and sort of being like, thank God these punks know who you are. So like, I don't, but it, but it's not like an act of shit on. So I'm like, okay, okay, we're good. Um, this last one, I'm gag on your entry, not on that titty, titty boob show. Um, <laughs> uh, it actually, excuse me, says titty title booby show. Excuse me. Uh, and you know, there are, there is a lot of unclothedness in the trailer, but that's the show. You know, when people have sex, they don't have clothes on. Um, wait, what is a titty title <laughs> booby show? What is that? I, I think there's a lot of bare chested men in the trailer. So and they were just saying that it was too much, tits? too much, too much tits. Like let's, let's put away the tits. Let's don't free the, free the birds here, you know? But, um, <laughs> 
Fuck dicks. I, I agree. Let the d- dicks and titties are meant to be swinging. And, you know, you might be at this point like, Frank, you've mentioned your mother. You have a mother. What does she feel about all this? Um, I love and these, I, I coming up with yeah, the interview you. questions I'm, himself. I'm, I'm glad I didn't have to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, actually, so I'll say two things here. First of all, I feel very personally connected to Karen Lee and Cam just because we're all friends, but also because uh, Karen Lee really is, you know, she is like uh, a friend, but also a mom to me in a lot of ways, just giving great advice. And especially on the sexual front, like I was afraid, honestly, before I did this show to even like take my clothes off in it. I was really scared of that. And like, I don't know if I want to like bear those intimate details and like, like any scripted show, there's some personal stuff in it. There's some stuff that's made up. And I was like, I don't know if I want to bear my soul and ask, but, um, you guys doing that every day really gave me like the confidence to share my stories with the Aww. world. So thank you. Thank you. My thank job you, is done Frank. here. Yeah. And I'm glad that we could be of service. I did want to yeah. ask you when you were recording this, what were your feelings? Were you, were you nervous to be completely naked and hooking up on camera? Yeah. So that is a great question. And I'll start by saying like the way I sold it to my mom, which was one of the things I was most worried about was she was like, she was like, Oh, I, I use the phrase unclothed. Cause I was like, that feels unclothed? the best. That feels, that feels more neutral than naked. And she's like unclothed. Oh my. And I was like, well, you know, it's, it's like sex in the city. She was like, Sex in the city. Oh, okay. So <laughs> <laughs> she was fully on board after that. Um, but I think what's challenging about this one for me is like that the show is fiction. And yet I strongly advocate for like, you know, ethical non-monogamy if that's what you want or not, if it's what you don't. And I think that's the only sort of like difficulty I've had of like, there are people who are going to think it's like my life story and it isn't. And like, and that's not to say like parts aren't true, but like Mm. it is a fictionalized show versus like you two are speaking about, um, you know, your truths most of the time. And I don't know if you had any advice for navigating that. We're like, I want to be like this positive sexual advocate, but I also don't want people to feel like I'm just kind of like writing my autobiography here on screen. Like, because for as open as I am and like as sex is great. Um, but I also feel like I do keep my private life private and that's counterintuitive because I'm doing something so forward here. So I don't know if you feel that like, you know, cause obviously you, you have a relationship. A shit. Well, but like you have a relationship with D's and it's not like you're like, you know what oh. D's and I did last night. Yeah, so that, I guess, how do you draw that line between like, I want to share of myself, but also my relationship is like sort of private, but you know, it's scripted. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's it. So the people I will think, assume what they want. Exactly. Yeah. I don't think you should care. Yeah. I wouldn't care. I would, I care if you had to speak openly and, and perform with Matt yeah, and, and, yeah, yeah. You know, but since he's out of the picture and mm-hmm. obviously it's you're, you're acting. Yeah, that was one of the main reasons why I, I think like, well, Matt hates acting too, but like it was never a consideration for us to be acting in this together because like there needs to be a clear separation of like what's reality and what's fiction. Um, Though Matt, uh, we are, in fact, you're the first to hear it. We are doing three more episodes of the show. Oh, um, hell yes. Yeah, we got financing to do episodes four through six, which is very exciting. Holy shit. And uh, I will be directing episode four and Matt will be directing episode five. Wow. So if you thought it couldn't get any more meta than Matt directing the guy who's playing my boyfriend having sex, with me i mean oh, there you wow. go <laughs> i think it's only helping your relationships yeah yeah to address your question that you've the, in for the first part of what your response yeah, yeah so anything anytime you're creating an art that is that is towing the line between reality and fiction mm-hmm. is very very tricky because yeah. people are going to assume this is what must be the case yep yeah and it took many years before i was like to figure out where the boundaries were about where i can sh- what experience I can share about because this is a little truth to our sneaky freaks. I don't talk a lot about the hookups that I have. No, same, especially of, uh, of recent. And when yeah. they're going on, you don't tell me it either. I mean, I, I never, you're heard in the about, complete I, dark I, over here. I, yeah. I, I think you tell me less now. <laughs> yeah. When we, before we did the podcast, That's so funny because I, you don't which, know if it'll get used or not. <laughs> no, well, it also, I think it's, his, it's only fair to keep his, it personalizes where it is. It also yeah. sours yeah. some of like the current relationship by talking mm. about it, you know. It and also they, they're not completely on board or whatever. Then it's not fair to them either. So yeah, I, yeah. And, and then I also do think that even though I try to present it as truthfully as I can on the show, it is a caricature in some ways. Definitely. And even like you, you are not nearly as anxious in real life, I would say, as you are on the show. I know. Like, so that's very much a characterization. And I, I feel for you being like, oh, people are just going to assume like, how do I function moment to moment? Exactly. <laughs> but you're honestly, it's, the highlights. You're it's not a, the lowlights. Yeah. This is supposed to be a comedy. It's supposed to be entertaining. Definitely. So 
I, you so know, if you watch me during the day, you'd be bored out of your fucking mind. Right. So I have to kind of choose to ham up certain parts of mm-hmm. myself. And, For sure. You know. And that's what I like anyway. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, and those are the parts that, yeah. that make my mom laugh. I mean, laugh. obviously, when I say I have no life, I, I mean it. <laughs> so, it, but it, it is a comfort of just doing it yeah. over and over and over again, and so. just not giving a shit if people will judge you, and if they judge you, they're just wrong. And I think it, I think it helps that like you know our casting crew, like Matt. <laughs> it became a refrain on set like thank god for matt because whenever like something needed to be figured out he was the one who would like come to the rescue and do it like he even this is how great a partner he is he literally walked around town taking photos of me and tim the actor who plays my boyfriend and then took those photos and basically erased his existence from our home for shooting oh <laughs> and my replaced god all photos of himself with photos of me and tim so Aww. like he's it, it's a great family in the casting crew and like everyone's cool and just we're very like oh my god of course we're like open with each other and i think like it's because it's because we can be open that at least amongst ourselves, you're right. We recognize the difference between like what's real and what's not. But I think the best way I could summarize my philosophy at this point is I love the golden girls and Blanche Devereaux one time says um, about uh, a book her sister wrote, but stealing Blanche's stories. Well, sure. Some of the details are true, but the names have been changed to protect the satisfied. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. See, I am curious though, because a lot of our listeners listen because they want to become more comfortable talking about sex, yeah. engaging in sex. So how did you get to the point where you are now comfortable to he put this out there? He told you. He <laughs> listens to sex talk with my mom. Why are you having a, bo- a problem I just with think that? that there could be other things yeah. that might have... That's it, Cam. He listened to sex talk with my mom I think and I he got comfortable <laughs> talking about it and then he, the next thing you know, he's uh, full on fisting. I think, <laughs> I think like, uh, <laughs> that's actually a surprise in episode two. So maybe cut out all references to it. No, um, but I think... Uh, it honestly, it is sex talk with my mom in another way of like no judgment. So like Matt and I obviously talked because we we're like, okay, well, like again, like I'm the star of this, like people are going to like assume stuff and whatever. And we just realized like our relationship was secure and strong enough that it didn't matter. Like, obviously I'm not going to be like, you know what Matt and I did last night. Um, but you know, that just, this is a work of art. This is entertainment, but it is also to prove points. I very much believe in about like sexual openness, fluidity, and just, conversations we we come when we communicate i like um, i like when you go the safe word is yes yeah <laughs> oh. um, i mean i'm so excited to watch this thing i've yeah. read the Thank scripts you. but i really cannot wait to see this so and, where can they find it again yes yes so um the right now the trailer and uh is at open to it series.com and whenever there are new episodes posted that's where they're going to be so that's the only really uh url you need oh. like uh, episode one is going to be online for all of april for wicked queer um Boston's LGBTQ plus film festival. And so there will be a link uh, on that website at open to it series.com for every time something like that happens, because hopefully we have uh, more debuts in our future, which will be cool. cool. Um, it's fucking awesome. Oh, and I guess my Instagram, if you want to, I post enough thirst traps. Cause like, you know, I got a brand here um, oh. at frank.arthur.smith on Instagram. Pretty Hell yes. Intuitive. I love it. Frank.arthur.smith. And will you be, at our sneaky, not to put you on the spot, yeah. but you are cordially invited to our Sneaky Freak patron party this Wednesday, uh, March 23rd at 5 p.m. Pacific time. I am ordinarily always there. This one's a definite maybe because Matt and I will be um, in Atlanta for his sister's wedding. So there isn't any wedding event next Wednesday, but um, that's if, the if only. If you're traveling, we understand. For those of you who don't know what the hell Cam's talking about, we're talking <laughs> about Patreon. Patreon is a place where you can support our show by just throwing us a few dollars a month. And you'll get to be part of this amazing community of sneaky freaks. These are, uh, this is our lifeblood. These are the people that actually fund us to record in this awesome studio. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're very grateful for you. So and thank you, you can- very much, Frank, for being a very right. longtime supporter on Patreon. Thank you. I've wanted to do this for a really long time. I'm really happy you had me. And I wasn't always, there was a time where I was not comfortable talking about this. And that was a, an evolution here. Where I was like, I'm ready. Now's the time. I, know, I said it to Cam. So and and you're so, so welcoming. And thank you. Our job is done. So, mm-hmm. okay. I'm so, so that's grateful for that. Patreon is P A T R E O N dot com slash sex talk with my mom. If you want to join, we would appreciate you doing so because then you could be an official sneaky freak. By the way, I am wearing Sneaky Freak merch today, just so you know. If you guys would kindly go to our our website and buy some merch. Sextalkwithmymom.com. Merch tab. Buy some merch. Wear it. Put it on Instagram or TikTok or wherever. We will definitely repost it. It's a good shout out for whatever you're wanting to do with your life. I expect Frank to be wearing his Sneaky Freak shirt soon. Hell yeah. Right now I'm just wearing a 
pink button down. Mm-hmm. Next time. <laughs> we do. We want you guys to watch us on YouTube so you can see you can see the whole crew here. That's right. Just go to YouTube.com and search for Sex Talk with My Mom. Last but not least, please, if you enjoy this, please leave us a rating and review. It really helps us out. And uh, share this with a friend. Do, and we have a rating that we can, I mean, a review that I like to read. Okay, go for it, Moot. Five stars. This is the best podcast. I have listened to literally hundreds of podcasts. However, this one makes me belly laugh every time I listen. I also learn something about improving my life and or, and or sex life. I recommend it to anyone and everyone that will listen. I love this podcast. H.L. Davis. H.L. Davis. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much, H.L. H.L. Davis is very smart. (laughs) Yo, thank you so much for that sweet, sweet review. Thank you to everyone for supporting our show. And And Frank, how would you like to join me in a little rendition of Let Me Tell You About the Birds Birds and and the the Bees bees and the Flowers and the the Trees. And And you fill in the blank. Oh, God. (laughs) I make fun of you every week and I don't have it. Um, Come on. uh, Now uh, I see you in the hot seat. Being open to monogamy or polyamory. Oh, <laughs> he fucking nailed it. He just fucking I'm schooled speechless. us. Speechless. Not us, me. <laughs> he schooled you. Thank Love you so you much for coming on, Frank. That was awesome. It was fun. A pleasure. I'm every time the word. Oh, love you. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. You are listening to a pleasure podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com.